This is the story of one small town in the north of England and its attempt to take on the economic might of one of the fastest growing nations in the world. This is the Battle of Kirby versus China. And the weapon of choice? Cushions. If they can make them quicker, cheaper and better than their Asian competitor, then it'll prove that jobs can come back to Britain for good. Morning, ladies. <laughs> Tony Caldera owns two cushion factories. This would be good for a fight, wouldn't it? <laughs> Land of open glory, what do you reckon? <laughs> In Kirby Merseyside, he employs 40 people. How long have you worked for us now? 14 years. 14 years. You don't get that for armed robbery, do you? No. <laughs> and in this factory on China's industrial east coast, he employs 50. Now Tony's embarking upon one of the biggest business experiments of his career. What I'm trying to do here is bring work back from China to the UK. In China, wage costs and general inflation is very high at the moment and it's becoming less and less competitive. Tony wants to prove that Britain can capitalize on increasing Chinese costs and reinvigorate its own manufacturing base to steal back the work. It's an experiment that will pit Kirby against China, a David and Goliath battle. Tony has given himself three months to find the right staff, train them, and then hang on to them. If we can't get the right staff to get the, the goods produced in time, we'll let our customers down, we'll lose the orders, and all of this project, all of this experiment, all of this trial that we've currently got is all going to be a waste of time. It's the beginning of Tony's crusade. He's hitting Kirby Town Centre in his search for the next generation of British manufacturers. We need staff quickly if there are people that want them. At short notice, 80 job-hungry people have turned up to hear what he has to offer. The girl in the red card, she'll give you all the necessary forms. Competition for jobs is tough. In this area, there are 14 unemployed people for every vacancy. Any job that we put out, we are oversubscribed for in terms of numbers applying for it. 46 people have been invited for interviews, with jobs ranging from warehouse work and cushion stuffing to the skilled craft of sewing. Will these be Kirby's heroes in the quest to defeat China? What would your ideal job be? Well, at the moment, it's just a stable job. OK. Something's going to keep your feet on the ground. Have you done anything that's similar, either in manufacturing or, or warehousing or anything like that, or, or production line work? Have you done anything along those no, lines? No, however, I am willing to learn and easily adapt to it. OK. What actually goes against you is the fact that you haven't got direct factory experience. How are you going to be able to manage working underneath someone when you've been used to supervising for a long time? Are you not overqualified? Well, no. It's, you know, it's just the way I work. I just, I just like to get the job done. The factory offers the minimum wage to start with at six pounds and eight pence an hour, and for eighteen to twenty-year-olds, just under a fiver. If you'd like to just take a seat. Rebecca is just nineteen. On her CV is a fast food outlet, a sunbed shop and a call centre. She last used a sewing machine at school, but it's a far cry from working on a factory floor. I like the way that you've always tried your best to, to, to stay in work, but you don't seem to have been able to have held anything down. Is that because you were at college? I've gone from job to job straight away. I've never really not had a job. OK. Also hoping to make it onto Tony's fast sewing floor is 19-year-old Sophie. She's been out of full-time work for six months, but she does have an evening job. See my job? I am really hard work and I always have been. And from reception to year 11, I never had one day off school. Mm -hmm. I had 100% attendance all the time. If any town is in need of a boost to manufacturing, then it's this one. 
Kirby in the borough of Knowsley is just down the road from Liverpool. We had the, the decline in the 80s, unemployment rose to probably in the region of about 22%. So we've had generational unemployment and we're probably looking at second generation worklessness now. The North was Britain's manufacturing heartland, but years of decline have taken their toll. Today Kirby's in the fifth most deprived borough in England, with a quarter of people claiming some kind of benefit, and the unemployment level 70% higher than the national average. Tony's taken on 17 new staff. For Nick, Paul, Gary, his brother Todd, Rebecca, Sophie and Val, it's their first day. These will be the troops in his battle against China's global dominance. Morning ladies, you all right? Yeah. Yeah. You all up for this? Yeah. If you want to follow me now, I'll sort you out. Leading the new trainees is Pam, the head of the sewing floor, with over 38 years experience. Her main focus will be Rebecca and Sophie, with no factory experience. Val has sewn before. I don't like people who mess me around, and I've not had, I've not had anybody who messes me around. They'll all listen to me, and they'll all do what I ask. If Kirby's going to take on China, then these two 19-year-olds will have to do what she asks. But right now, just learning to thread the machine is a challenge. Yeah, look, I'm putting... Unless they churn out a minimum of a thousand cushions a week, they'll be a cost to the business. Pam has run the factory's experienced sewing floor for 12 years. She's in charge of 12 machinists who together sew 12,000 cushions a week. Joanne's been a machinist since she was 16 and is one of the fastest. You can come in and watch me. After 26 years of sewing, Joanne is here to stay. But the floor's in need of young blood. Sewing is a dying skill, and the youngest person here is 39. In many ways, a lot of our workforce is getting older, and a lot of the skill base is also getting older. In many ways, a lot of our workforce is getting older, and a lot of the skill base is also getting older as well. We're getting to the point where we need to get some new staff in and some younger people into the industry in order that we've got a long-term sustainable future. But Malcolm's sceptical about recruiting trainees. Until they're up to speed, they're a cost to the business. We've not had people under 20 for quite some time actually training. We've tended to recruit more experienced ladies because we need to make cushions quickly. So when you start to train people, obviously they don't add any extra work to your, your output. Like all the machinists, Rebecca and Sophie will be paid minimum wage, but can earn a bonus if they break their targets of about 50 cushions an hour. But at the moment, there's a lot to learn. Well, they won't be able to make the money straight away. Cause I, I can remember I never used to earn money straight away. And then gradually they will. There's still a long way to go if the new recruits are to compete with the Chinese workers who earn just one pound an hour. In the warehouse, it's also the first day for brothers Nick and Paul. So if you just push the box in. They were both unemployed before Tony gave them a chance. Nine hours on the factory floor has been tough for the younger new recruits. I'm tired. <laughs> and sleep in bed. <laughs> I'm so tired. I say I'm feeling quite tired now. I can tell I've had an early morning and a long day kind of thing. Like I'm, I'm starting to feel it now, to be honest. I do hope they will be back tomorrow because I have seen it before where people have come in, been a very positive and confident first day and then the following day they just don't turn up. Tony is expanding in Kirby, or at least that's the plan. There's already been a resignation. On the sewing floor, Rebecca and Sophie are still struggling with the demands of a skilled machinist job. If Tony's plan to take on China is to work, 
Then he needs his new workers to learn quickly. You okay, love? It just keeps doing that all the time, see? Right, let's up, let's have a look. Oh, be fine. Once you get your angle, you'll be fine. Don't worry. Just let your machine do the work, and you just guide it. Get to the end like that. What it is, it's just dangling. There you are. Okay. Do that corner's on there. Okay, well, don't get uh, frustrated. You'll be all right. By the end of the day, Rebecca has had to unpick her sewing five times. Sophie, just once. Sophie was... Taking on the might of the Far East is hard work, and for British manufacturing's troops, it's time for their reward. Right, Todd. Yeah, Thank you. Most of them have earned minimum wage, and are taking home £213 a week after tax. Yeah, but you're still enjoying it. Yeah, yeah. But the minimum wage is less for the 18 to 20 year olds, and they have just £182 in their pocket. There you go, Sophie. Congratulations. Thank you very much. It could be worse. In China, the workers earn £50 a week. It's my first paycheck since five months, and you know, it's just better than getting a jar or every two weeks, basically. Yeah. Uh, last time I got properly paid was about three, four months ago. Well, this time it'll make a big difference because I've been living off £40 a week. It's a fortnight into Tony's plan to bring work back to Britain from China, and there are already signs that the experiment is starting to creep. Rebecca's called in sick for the second time. Hi, Gary. You all right? You okay? I believe you might know something I don't. Uh, yeah, I think um, Rebecca started a new job. Really? Uh, only across the road in Vertex. She was talking about it on Friday when we finished, saying um, she got a phone call from right. Vertex. Yeah. And she said she's going to go and uh, see him Monday. And with an opportunity, I think she might have got the job. But you've not heard whether she had? I know she has, yeah. I know she's definitely got the job. That's a pity, isn't it? Yeah. She made such a good start as well. Yeah. Oh well, back to the drawing board then. All yeah, right, thanks right, for that, mate. All the best. See you a bit. To lose a second employee is a real blow for Tony. He wants to offer manufacturing to a new generation, but even with high local unemployment, he's got competition. Well, that's really disappointing because it looks as though she's got a, a relatively easy job, an easier job, not as physically demanding job in a call centre where she's got more money. That just goes to show how difficult it is to actually get people to start learning the trade, such as sewing machining. I think the new job Rebecca's gone to, she's got about 7.50 an hour, so it's quite a bit more. By leaving to work in a call centre, Rebecca has managed to increase her pay by a third. Ultimately, our customers won't allow us to pay our staff anymore. If, they, if we paid our staff too much, our products would become too expensive and then we wouldn't have any business at all. Staying competitive is crucial if the experiment is to succeed. His British workers are up against the whole of China. Back in Merseyside, there's not many jobs and lots of people. A labour surplus, so hanging on to staff in Kirby should be easy. But a fourth new starter has abandoned the factory, and it's only the third week of the experiment. Training new people to sew is also proving difficult. Hold it, hold, hold your that, put your that. Hold that. Left hand, some more that. All right, come on. Come on, straight down, come on, come on. Tony's lost almost a third of all his new starters. Unfinished orders are stacking up, and Kirby's plans to take on China are hanging by a thread. <laughs> 